Hey, it's Becky. Today I'm upgrading my seltzer machine by hooking it up to a 50 pound CO2 tank with the help of my friend Ian. We're calling it Endless Seltzer. Let's get started. Hey, it's Becky. Today I'm upgrading my seltzer machine to make it go woo. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't go woo. Hopefully it just goes. Yeah, you want it to go. Ian's a YouTuber who does mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and computer engineering. And in his videos, he makes these super fun inventions and raffles them off to support good causes. So you can win almost everything you see on his channel. We both really love fizzy water. You could say we're both in club soda. What's your soda club name, Becky? Helter Seltzer. What about you? <laughs> Bubbles. Awesome. We did some research online and found this adapter that connects the standard industrial type tank to the soda stream. That's all that's really required for the minimum viable product here, but we wanted to add a bit more engineering. So we also built an internet connected scale that keeps track of how much CO2 is left. After we built it, we tested carbonating more than just water, so stick around for the tasting at the end. We drove the van over to our local welding supply shop to pick up the tank which, although called a 50 pound tank, that's just the weight of the gas inside the tank. The full tank weighs 160 pounds. Yeah. He said it's this one that's the CO2. <laughs> Look at how big that tank is. So by far the hardest part of this project was slugging it up the stairs to Becky's yeah. apartment. At least it'll be about one third lighter when it's empty, and also she'll be going down the stairs, which may be Maybe a lot easier. Maybe easier? Yeah. Wait. Hey Becky, how you feeling? Tired. <laughs> Ugh. Remember when I suggested this as our YouTube collaboration? <laughs> the fun part is still coming. <laughs> the easy part of this project was ordering the electronics from DigiKey, the sponsor for this video. They carry absolutely everything and ship super fast. I put links to the parts I got for this build in the description. To build our scale, we're using load cell sensors. These are the same types of sensors as in your typical bathroom scale. They convert pressure into millivolts a signal that is then amplified by a load cell amplifier before outputting over serial to our microcontroller. We wired up a solderless breadboard prototype to test out these load cells and the amplifier, as well as the LCD screen. Okay, so we have our microcontroller and our load cell amplifier and our load cell and our Arduino library going, and when I squeeze it, the uh, numbers change. So the, the maximum ADC value right now shows 10,635 eh, units? Eh. I think that means pounds because we, we used the wrong uh, size weight. For we the didn't calibration. calibrate it right, yeah, of course, but we've got numbers coming in, so that's promising. Ooh. Next up is a feasibility test, just to make sure our basic idea of plumbing the tank to the soda stream with our special hose adapter was going to work. Thank you, hand truck. Okay, this part is easy. I've tested this part already. The soda stream end of the hose has a separate piece that screws in where the small tank normally would. The tank end of the adapter hose tightens onto the tank valve with a crescent wrench. That's good. I couldn't get a crescent wrench into the tight spots on the soda stream, so I used a pair of vice grips to tighten that. Okay. Lastly, the hose end's quick connect plugs into the end piece. Then it was time to test it out for the first time. No, you have gas experience. You yeah. know what you're doing. All right, you ready? Yeah. All right, I kind of want this on the ground. Just in case. Mm, Anticlimax is what we were looking for. Excellent. All right, I've closed this back up. So all I've done is carbonated the line, or pressurized the line. Let's test some water. Yeah. OK, here we go. Hey, big time. You hear that? That's the, the exhaust cool. valve. For me, I like five pumps. Oh, it's really got a lot just in the line. It doesn't taste like welding. <laughs> it tastes normal. Look at the fizzes. Oh, there's about to be a lot more fizz up in this house. Yeah. 
So exactly how endless will this 50 pounds of carbon dioxide be? Let's do the math. One liter of water, please. It's not a liter, it's 840 milliliters. I feel like it's relevant to the calculation. <laughs> All right, I'll write that down. Like who decided that was gonna be the number? The bottle designers? Yeah. This one says 0.89 quarts. This is the American one, and this is the international one. Get it out one. of here. I know, okay. Reason. All right, we're using the We're these. briefly using SI units. This, this one's gone. We're at uh, 1.743 kg. Okay, now we're going to add the bottle and do the recommended number of squirts. One. Mm -hmm. Two. Mm -hmm. Three. Yeah, a little bit escaped. Wow, three grams. We just added three grams of CO2. To, to the, the air. air. Okay, you ready for me to take it out? Uh, yes. Okay. So we did the thing, and now it's 1.736. Yeah. And that's a bigger glass than I use. Sure. So let's say there's three. I think there's three per 840 milliliter bottle. Four, five, four. Grams, grams per, per pound. pound. And now, if we cancel these off, do, 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 well, the do, units do, do, cancel, yes. We get days per pound. By seven is 195 days per pound. Oh, wow. <laughs> 9,728 days. Divided by 365.25. <laughs> 26 and a half years. So this tank if you drink one glass of seltzer a day, <laughs> will last for 26 years. That's pretty endless. I think we can say endless soda water. If you have 26 years worth of soda water, you're not sweating how much soda water you have on, on hand. Yeah. But I think it's also important to calculate how long it's gonna last for me. Yeah? And okay. to do that, we need to do the experiment over again with five, five pumps. Five squirts, okay. And, uh, and one liter, one full bottle per day, not one glass. Okay. 2522 divided by 365.25 is 6.9 years. Hey, that's not too far off from our initial estimate before we even started this project, that, yeah. I, that this would do six years of my seltzer. Mm -hmm. So remind me again, with your 50 pound CO2 tank strapped to the wall, how many times in the future will you be going to the post office with this bottle? Zero, zero Good. times. For, the, for, for like the next month? No, for the next seven years. Yeah. <laughs> Go team. I was also interested to calculate the cost savings this setup would generate over time. The big tank works out to about 18 cents per liter of carbonated water before the equipment cost is recouped, where the subscription canister produces seltzer that is about 38 cents per liter all the time. So for the price of the tank setup lasting seven years, I'd only get two years worth of subscription canisters. Next up, it's time to build the scale, starting with the electronics. We soldered up a perfboard version of our earlier circuit prototype and attached the load cells with long wires. Typically, you would use four load cells to build a scale, one in each corner, then a plate presses down evenly on the sensors, so there isn't a lot of clearance between the tall part of the sensor and the rest of it. We constructed the scale out of pieces of scrap plywood I had around, and then we reinforce the corners with pieces of metal so that the heavy tank doesn't just deform the plywood onto the sensor. The scale consists of a base piece, a top plate, four side walls, and a middle piece where the load cells will live, which also has a cutout for the electronics. No fancy woodworking here, just a few pocket holes to stick everything together. This design is also suitable for building a scale inside a kegerator. Just adjust the dimensions to fit the size of your keg. You can find the step-by-step -step instructions and sample code for this project at the link in the description. The microcontroller connects to the Wi-Fi and lets me know how much CO2 is left. Hey Becky, can I show you something? Look. Oh, yeah. you've done it. You got 50 pounds. 50 pounds, six years, <laughs> 10 months, 23 days. <laughs> got so much to do. <laughs> Look, you got a new friend. What do you think?
We're gonna call her. So we're gonna measure the weight of the CO2 tank, and then we're gonna add an offset factor so that our code will output this actual true value of the weight of the tank. Calibrating. Calibrating. Yes, calibration. And we're gonna put wood on the scale because the scale is glass. Ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Not doing anything. How am I doing? Good, you're on. Okay. Wow. 160. And go. Is it out? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 160 pounds. That's like almost you. So you don't have to build the electronics part of this project to enjoy the fizzy benefits, but you must understand the dangers of working with a pressurized tank of gas. If it falls over and the valve is damaged, the whole thing becomes a dangerous projectile, basically a missile. So the safety precaution we're taking is to attach a tank strap to the wall. Don't skip this step. Since we're mounting to brick, we picked up a specialized masonry bit in the size specified by our mounting hardware instructions and used the hammer setting on my drill to make the holes. The strap bracket then screws into the anchors. The tank and scale get into position. And the tank gets strapped in. I intend to keep the tank valve closed when I'm not actively carbonating, but just in case there were to be a slow leak, while it's not terribly likely, I wanted to take one more safety precaution since this thing is in my house. I picked up a carbon dioxide monitor with an alarm and installed it low to the ground near the tank. Oh, we need to turn the tank on. Is it safe to turn the tank on now? Probably. Let's see what happens. Ready, tidy, lefty, loosey, right? Mm -hmm. Did you strong tighten it? Uh, maybe. Oh, I got it. You got it? Okay. I'm strong. I didn't hear any explosion noise. No, I heard so a That's good. Do I open it like all the way? All the way. All yeah, the way. it's designed to be open. All the way open? Yeah. <laughs> That's the sweet, sweet sound of seltzer, my friends. Did it. Uh, water's cool, but I feel like we could maybe carbonate some other things. Okay, great. Cheers. Okay, you're drinking it. Whoa, what is that? Ooh. Can you it tastes like, like, it tastes like a candy apple or something. Mm -hmm. It's almost, also tastes a little buttery. Prune juice? Nope. Is it apple juice? Mm -mm. Pear juice? Mm -mm. Smell it. Quince juice? Grape juice? Look at the counter. <laughs> oh, it's Coke in the Hut. Yeah, I think once you know what the thing is, it's a lot less gross. When you're trying to figure out like, what's this what mystery liquid in um, my mouth? <laughs> we got our, uh, our second uh, <clears throat> ingredient there. Notice I left the top off. Yeah, because I can't see what it is anyway because it's just fizzy. <laughs> yeah, it's just foamy. There could be anything under that surface. <laughs> Cheers. Do you want me to tell you what it is after you've taken a couple bites? Mm, I want to guess. Oh. Whoa, this is actually really good. Mm. I can't actually get any of it. Is it, but I'm looking at it. Is it canned peaches? It's canned peaches. It looks like canned peaches. It smells like it smells good. The foam mm. tastes amazing. Look at the foam. Yeah. It's really foamy. Mmm. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah, and the you can taste a little bite of the carbonation. It's nice. It adds something good. Mm -hmm. This is a win. Next. Okay. Mmm. Mm. Mystery beverage. Hmm. Whatever it is, let's, 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 let's try here. Oh. Ooh. Oh, I like that one. That's good. Yeah. Do you know what it is? Mm, it tastes a little alcoholy. Nope. Pretty sure I know what this is. Yes, you do. You know this flavor. I need a clue. You have it when you're dehydrated. <clears throat> Gatorade? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Wow. What color? Is it red? No. It's purple. Mm -mm. It's blue. Mm -mm. It's orange. Mm -mm. It's pink. Uh -uh. It's ice blue. No. It's green. No. <laughs> It's yellow. Yes! This is a classic. I know 
right away what this is. It's lemon lime Gatorade. <laughs> this is lemon lime Gatorade. I knew instantly. Ooh, that's a smell. Good smell, great uh, smell. Oh, right, and you're a vegetarian, so you wouldn't serve me chicken stock, but it might be just no. as gross. Is it soup? Um, just gonna put the lid on and then answer that question. <laughs> it's soup, I guessed it. Soup, what kind of soup? <laughs> Why so many guesses? <laughs> Cheers. Mm, this is gonna be good. Good. Mmm, mmm. It is tomato soup. I don't like tomato soup on a good day. Mm, mm, carbonating it, it makes it taste good. Fizzy. It doesn't taste fizzy to me though. Mmm, I love it. Okay, get ready for it. Here we go. Final thing, known to be delicious. Okay. This is the only one I tested. Cheers. Cheers. Let's see what we got here. Mmm. Tequila. You margarita? But it's got tequila in it. It's tequila in it. Yes! I got all three right away. <laughs> per uh, perfectly right. Yes, you can taste the tequila. What do you think of the fizz? Mm. I like it. Yeah. Also, I like the tequila component. Yeah, me too. I like mm -hmm. tequila. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. Be sure to subscribe to Ian's channel while you're at it. Thanks so much to DigiKey for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Welcome to my luxurious van. Mm -hmm. Behold the luxury. <laughs> we call it Becky Mobile. We call it the Vandemic. The van. Oh. <laughs> we got it in November. We're gonna workshop that. <laughs>